The Institute for the Study of War team pointed out that the Russian invaders were losing too much equipment and weapons for minimal gains on the front. This can leave the enemy army without the tools to wage war. As American analysts note, the Russian invaders are still trying to regain the initiative on the battlefield and achieve quick victories with the help of a mechanized maneuver. However, large-scale frontal attacks cause serious losses. It is not only about manpower, but also about technology. Analyzing the actions of the Russian army, the Institute for the Study of War team came to the conclusion that the Russian military command cannot master the nuances of a mechanized maneuver on an almost transparent battlefield in Ukraine. The readiness of the Russian military command to spend a large number of armored vehicles on limited tactical tasks reflects poor long-term operational planning, explained the American Institute for the Study of War. According to analysts, restrictions on Russian equipment in the medium and long term will lead to the fact that such failed mechanized attacks will become more expensive over time. Until now, the soldiers of the Russian Federation counted on the restoration of stocks of Soviet-era weapons and military equipment, especially armored vehicles, but the situation may change soon. Against the background of large-scale losses, the command of the Russian president will be forced to additionally mobilize the Russian economy and defense industry. It is also important to understand that the aggressor country is gradually depleting its limited Soviet reserves. American analysts have doubts that the Russian defense industry will be able to produce enough vehicles to withstand the high rate of equipment losses even if additional economic mobilization is carried out. As of today, Russia has enough armored vehicles to conduct periodic company and larger mechanized attacks along the entire front line for the foreseeable future. However, the failed strategy of the Russian command will provoke a worsening of the situation with the equipment of the Russian armed forces in the coming years. Huge Russian three-ton glide bombs will soon meet NATO defense technologies in Ukraine. The new giant bombs are a terrifying move by Russia that could backfire on the Russians once the bomb-carrying planes are caught in Ukraine's new air defense system, the Telegraph writes. As the publication noted, these huge Russian bombs will soon meet NATO defense technologies. The Russian Aerospace Forces have a new giant bomb, a three-ton monster with retractable wings and satellite guidance that has a range of tens of kilometers if dropped from high altitude by a Sukhoi fighter bomber. It is a terrifying weapon that can kill and maim Ukrainian soldiers and civilians hundreds of meters from the point of impact, the article says. At the same time, it is pointed out that these bombs are bulky and their shorter range compared to lighter bombs could seriously endanger Russian air crews. And as soon as Ukraine strengthens its air defense, Russian aircraft carrying large glide bombs should become the first targets, the publication writes. Recall that the Institute for the Study of War described the threat of Russian occupiers launching FAB 3000 glide bombs. The fact that Russian forces have figured out how to launch the FAB 3000 is a significant development and will increase the destructive potential of Russia's ongoing glide bomb attacks against Ukrainian forces and infrastructure. Later, observer Kovalenko analyzed the first clear photo of the modernized Russian FAB 3000 with the unguided bomb wing kit installed on it. He came to the conclusion that the designers did not make any changes to the bomb itself. Even the nose of the FAB 3000 is covered with a fairing in the old-fashioned way to reduce air resistance. The FAB 3000 M54 carries a whopping 1,400 kilograms of explosives. It is not hard to see why this would be attractive to Moscow. The Russian Air Force frequently uses universal gliding and correction module strikes to destroy buildings serving as Ukrainian defensive positions, helping Russian ground troops inch forward. Thanks chiefly to the universal gliding and correction module, Russia is currently launching around 3,500 glide bombs per month. At the same time, the FAB 3000's greater destructive power probably comes at the cost of a shorter range. According to Ukrainian and Russian sources, universal gliding and correction module equipped FAB 500 bombs have a maximum range of 60 to 70 kilometers. But TASS, citing a Russian defense industry source, claimed the industrial gliding and correction module equipped FAB 3000 has a maximum range of 50 to 60 kilometers. That claim sounds plausible. So far, Russian Su-34s appear to be using universal gliding and correction module-equipped FAB-3000s 
to strike buildings within around 10 kilometers of the front line. In the past, Russian Su-34s have typically released glide bombs roughly 35 to 50 kilometers behind the front line. They appear to be doing the same with the Fab 3000, with one video showing an Su-34 releasing the bomb roughly 40 kilometers from the front line. Russian pilots could fly closer to enable deeper strikes, but this would place them under greater threat from Ukrainian air defenses.